Good morning, everybody. So glad that you joined us for this Christmas Eve service. Uh, joining you today from my house, as you can see, we're not in our uh, building today, but uh, we're here with you and hopefully this day finds you with family, friends, and those uh, surrounded with you that love you uh, during this holiday season. Uh, wow, it's Christmas Eve. Can you believe that this year has just went so fast? And uh, man, we're looking forward to 2024. We're looking forward to what's ahead. And we're also grateful for what we've seen as far as the blessings of God in 2023. It's been a wonderful year. There's still a few more days left, a couple more days left for God to do some amazing things to fulfill what you've been believing for in this year. Uh, I want to get right into the Word uh, this morning, and hopefully you have your Bibles with you as you've joined us today. Um, I want you to turn with me. We'll use as a text this morning, Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. The Bible tells us here, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not. To take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. I want you to pay very close attention to that very last verse, verse 23, and we'll use this as our text. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which is interpreted God with us with us. Let's pray before we get into today's message. Father, we thank you for such a wonderful opportunity to gather together as a group of believers. Even though we're all in separate places, we're gathered in spirit today to receive from you, seated at your feet, to feed at your table, and to receive a word from you. Your word declares that faith comes by hearing and hearing by your word and we know that faith will rise up as we hear what you have prepared for us and what you have to say to us today in Jesus name. And everybody said, amen. Notice what he said here. And this is key. He said, Emmanuel, God with us. Now I want you to pay very close attention for the next 20 minutes. We're going to talk about the three reasons why Jesus came from heaven to earth. The three reasons uh, on this Christmas Eve why Jesus came to earth. Number one, Jesus came to erase all the misconceptions about God. Let me say that again. Jesus came to erase, to clear up all the misconceptions about God. You see, there are many misconceptions about God. Some people think he's an unmerciful God. Some people think he's a, a, a mean God. Some people even think he's looking up from heaven and he's looking down to earth and he's watching you and you better be good because if you're not, he could strike you down at any moment. There are so many misconceptions and wrong ideas and wrong theories and wrong truths. It's not truth at all. But the idea that people have about God is is, uh, is not true. But Jesus came to the earth to erase all the misconceptions about God. You know, there's a song, Bette Mittler, I believe, sung this song, and it's a good song, but yet it's unscriptural. 
And the song says, from a distance, God is watching you. From a distance, God is watching you. But you know, as a believer, God's not from a distance. God's in us. God's with us. God's for us. God's on our side. Remember what our text said, His name shall be called Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. It's important that you understand that God's with you because with God, all things are impossible. It was the will of the Father to send Jesus in the earth so He could express the Father to you and I. Notice John's Gospel, chapter 14. In John's Gospel, chapter 14, starting in the ninth verse, Jesus was confronted. I shouldn't say confronted. He was asked a question by Philip and his disciples. They would ask him and say, Jesus, show us the Father. We would like to see the Father. And Jesus replies to them and says, Have I been so long time with you? And yet you know me, Philip. And here you ask me to see the Father? And Jesus responds to him and says, How sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. In other words, Jesus is saying to Philip, You've been with me all this time, and as you've been with me, when you see me, you see the Father. Jesus came to reveal the will of the Father. He is the express image of the Father while He walks on the face of the earth. And He tells His disciples, I'm one with the Father. And if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And I think it's really interesting here in verse 11 of chapter 14. He says, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. In other words, you can see my works and you can see my action and by seeing my action, you can see the will of God. In other words, faith comes where the will of God is known. And Jesus is the will of God in action. I love that. John chapter 1, verse 18, the scripture tells us this. No one has ever seen God, but the unique one who, who is himself God is near to the Father's heart. He has revealed God to us. One translation says that Jesus made, made it possible where God could be seen and made known to mankind. No one's seen God, but when Jesus came to the earth, come on somebody, I don't know about you, but I get excited when I see Jesus in the scripture. When I see Jesus, I can see the will of the Father. I can see the Father. I can know the Father through Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. No man comes to the Father but by me. And you know, uh, he came to express the Father's will. And there's so many misconceptions about God. Some people believe that he's a part-time healer. Some people believe that he doesn't heal at all, or maybe he does with some and not with others. Some people may believe that he's an unmerciful God, or it's impossible to please God. You know, for for so many years under the law, man tried to approach God and tried to uh, appease God and, and please God, yet trying to be obedient to the law, they still failed. And it was impossible to become perfect in the eyes of God. That's why no man ever seen has ever seen God. But yet Jesus came to express that God is a merciful God. God is a loving God. God is a healing God. You know, when you see Jesus healing the sick, you see the will of the Father. When you see Jesus forgiving sins, you see the will of the Father. When you see Jesus sitting with tax collectors and sitting with the unlovable and, and, uh, and being with people that the religious people wouldn't be with, you see the will of the Father. You see that God's not a mean God. God is a loving God. He's a blessing God. He's a, a supply. He's a source. You see Jesus feeding the 5,000. You see a God of abundance. Everywhere you see the miracles of God and the provision of God through the ministry of Jesus on the earth, you are seeing the Father. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And what we celebrate when it comes to Christmas, we celebrate the fact that Jesus came from heaven to earth, born of a virgin, 
And he, and he said it was prophesied that his name would be Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. The, 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 the first reason that Jesus came was to express the will of the Father, was to express God to mankind, was to show the earth that God loves them, was to express the will of God. Jesus was the will of God in action. And we've got to understand that, that this, that this really is the reason for the season. Jesus came to connect you to the Father. Jesus came to, to connect you with not just the Creator, but with God who wants to be your Father. And uh, He came to clear up and to erase all of the misconceptions of God. And we see that through His life, through His ministry, through His walk in the earth. We see it through His goodness. We see, through, see it through His mercy expressed. We see that everywhere people touched Jesus, they were healed. Come on, He went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. We see the thief come to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus said, I've come to give life. So when we see Jesus giving life, we see that this is the Father. This is the will of the Father. He doesn't take life, He gives life. And so we have all these misconceptions, but Jesus came to clear them up. Isn't that good? The, the second reason why Jesus came from heaven to earth, he came to express the love of the Father. John chapter 3, verse 16, we know this by heart. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. You don't even have to look that verse up because we all know that. But we must understand that God loved the world so much that He gave us Jesus. Jesus is the expression of God and the express image of God, but He's also the expression of love. When you see Jesus coming from heaven to earth, doing the will of the Father. When you see Jesus taking our sins and going all the way to the cross and taking death and, and, and going to hell and taking the penalty of sin and taking our shame and all these things, Him becoming our substitute, we see the, the love of the Father. Know this, that Jesus is the reason for the season. We've heard that so many times during this time of the year, that Jesus is the reason for the season. But I want you to notice something. It, that's, that's, that's true, but there's also another truth. You are also the reason for the season. Jesus came for you. Jesus came because He loved you. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 says, God commended His love toward us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Another translation says that God demonstrated His love towards us by sending Jesus while we were yet sinners to take our place. Notice that. Jesus coming from heaven to earth to complete a finished work, to go to the cross, to go to hell, to be raised from the dead, to be seated at the right hand of the Father. He did that because you're the reason. And so, yes, Jesus is the reason for the season, but you as well are the reason He came. He came because He loved you. And Him coming by way of a virgin, conceived of, by the Holy Ghost. What a miracle conception. He came with a miracle and he ended uh, his finished work with the resurrection. Hallelujah, which in itself is a miracle. He rose himself from the dead. This story is a miracle story. Glory to God. He is a God of miracles. But you know why he's a God of miracles? For you. And that God of miracles wants to be with you, in you, around you. And yes, he is for you. But first, you've got to understand before he did any miracle, his love was expressed by him coming. Hallelujah. That's why they said joy to the world. The Lord has come. Why would it bring joy? Because 
He was going to become the substitute and take the place that man and every man should have taken for sin. But Jesus became sin personified on the tree. Glory to God. And he was buried and he rose from the dead and he's now seated at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I. This is the demonstration of God's love towards you. Jesus coming by way of the virgin birth was God's love demonstrated towards you. Isn't that good? God demonstrated his love. And you know, you, you want to have a really good uh, revelation of that. You want to really meditate on the truth every day of your life. You want to know that God loves me. Hallelujah. If you were the only person on the face of the earth, he still would have sent Jesus from heaven to earth by way of virgin birth. Hallelujah. To come through that manger and to grow up in the stature and, and wisdom of God and walk on the streets of, uh, of, of Galilee and heal the sick and raise the dead and live a perfect life. He would have done all that because he loves you. And you, you need to really take that personal and apply that to your heart personally. God loves me. He expressed his love towards me through his son, Jesus, and his finished work. Amen. You know that song, Mary, did you know? I wonder if Mary really did know the extent of how Jesus was love personified to the point where he was to give his own life on behalf of us because he loved us so much. Amen. God loves us. You know, God's love through Jesus, because Jesus is the ex express image of God. He's the will of God in action. God's love was demonstrated to that woman at the well. We read that over there in John's gospel in the fourth chapter. She was at the well and God, through Jesus, gave this woman three things. Forgiveness uh, of her past. Amen. Uh, purpose for living. Number two. And number three, eternal life. He gave her those three things. Jesus gives us those three things as well. Past forgiven, purpose for living, and home in heaven. Let me say that again and you can repeat that with me. Jesus came and he gave us those three things. Forgiveness from our past. Glory to God. Purpose for living. And lastly, home in heaven. He gave that to the woman at the well and he gives that to us. That's the love of God being expressed. Jesus came to give us love. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 18. Paul here, he's, he's praying for the church. And he prays, he said, Lord, I pray that they would be able, verse 18, to comprehend or to understand with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height of God's love, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth all knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Notice what he says, that the love of God has length to it. In other words, it's so long, it lasts forever. You know, the world's love is not like that. It's conditional. You know, some people may love you for a moment and not love you in the next moment because it's not the agape love. But the love of God, he said, I, I want you to be able to comprehend that the love of God has length to it. You can't outrun the love of God. There's love for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's eternal. It's agape love. Amen. He said, I want you to comprehend that and understand that Jesus came with love that lasts forever. He says, the, understand the breadth or the width of the love. You, you, you can go as far as you can right or far as you can to the left. But the love of God is so wide and so expansive that you can't outrun the, the love of God. You can't, do, you, you, you can't do something in your life where the love of God can't cover it. Isn't that so good? The depth of God. He said, I want you to comprehend uh, the depths of God's love. You can get into your deepest pit and the love of God will be there. You can get into the darkest night of your life or the worst experience you've ever been in and the love of God will be there. It'll be there uh, at your darkest hour for you because the Bible says the love has depth to it. Notice it has height. 
to the point where the love of God overlooks <laughs> at, at a high level. It'll overlook your failures, your mistakes, your shortcomings, and all of those uh, uh, pro problems that you have that where you don't feel like you measure up. But because of the blood of Jesus, come on, somebody, he's seated at the right end of the Father, making intercession for you at that mercy seat where that blood is. Glory to God. And, and, and because of that blood, we've got forgiveness. And it's so high. And that's how high God's love is. There's height to it. So high that it overlooks and it covers us. Oh man, there's so much to the love of God. And then lastly, the third thing that Jesus came to do. And this is an important thing that you understand. Jesus came to enable us a relationship with God. It brings us back to our text where Jesus said, or where the scripture says his name would be called Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. God wanted to be with you, you know, because with God, there's nothing that's too hard. There's nothing that's too difficult. Without God, there's going to be problem after problem after problem, shortcoming after shortcoming after shortcoming, no victory. Uh, and, you know, think about this. During those 400 silent years before Jesus arrived on the scene, there were no prophecies. There were no prophets speaking out. God wasn't speaking through his, through his, uh, through his prophets at all. People had no sign of God. It was silent. It was quiet. It was, it was some dark years. Yet people had a quest to want to know God to want to understand God and relate to God. Yet all along, God's saying, I want to relate to you to the point where I can be with you, move in you, live in you, express myself through you, have a relationship with you, talk to you, lead you, guide you. And so all of a sudden, after this 400 years, Jesus comes on the scene. Amen. And so now, because of Jesus, God has a way to come on the inside of us. Amen. Jesus made a way. See, Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And in the same respect, the Father can't come in us unless... Come on, somebody. We receive Jesus because he's the way to our connection with the Father. God wants to live big in us. God wants to express himself in such a great and mighty way to the point where not just in our lives God is moving, but through our lives he is moving and expanding his kingdom. And the reason Jesus came from heaven to earth is so that he could expand his kingdom so that God could be in me. God could be in you and every individual that's watching right now, even around the world. If you're watching, God wants to have relationship with you. God wants to not, not just relate to you, but relate in you and through you and with you. Come on, somebody. He said his name would be Emmanuel, God with us, with when God God's with you, you succeed. When God's with you, nothing's impossible. When God's with you, it doesn't matter if you're in a time of famine, you're blessed. When God's with you, whatever you put your hands to prospers. When God's with you, people are healed. People are touched. People are encouraged. Why? Because now you're the mouthpiece of God. And we've got to have an understanding that Jesus came from heaven to earth, not just to clear up all the misconceptions about God, but also to love us, yes, but also so that God could move in us, take residence in us. We're the temple of the living God. Come on, so that God could move and live and have his being in us. Amen. Hallelujah. He wants to move in you. He wants to live in you to the point where the life of God is flowing into your house, flowing into your marriage, flowing into your children's lives. And, and, and you're duplicating the life of God through your offspring and and all around you, the people can see that God is with you. Amen. God wants to express himself through your home. This is the reason that Jesus came, so that God could live in us.
Amen. The very reason you're here today, the very reason you're alive today is so that is because God wanted to get you here so he could live in you. Amen. Not just so you could be a, an ambassador and work for him, but God wants to have a personal relationship with you, fellowship with you. God got fellowship back with man because Jesus earned it through the death, burial, and resurrection. Come on, somebody. And he made a way to where Jesus could be the first fruit of many and that God could live in us and we could be his temple come on and God's blessings could grow in us and through us every day that we live wow what a blessing Jesus is the reason for the season but the reason he came was because of us and so we are the reason Jesus came and and, and he came because God wanted you back God wanted his man back. God wanted to live inside of you. God wanted to be a blessing to you. Glory to God. You may be facing something right now that seems insurmountable. You may be facing situations right now that's just too big for you or too much for you. And you may have crumbled uh, to the ground in your, in your room and thought, I'm helpless and there's no way to solve this situation. Or you may have questions and you don't have answers. Well, God is your answer. And with God, all things are possible. Emmanuel means God with us and with God, all things are possible. I'm so looking forward to what's ahead for the church. I'm looking forward to my tomorrow. The Lord knows the days of the upright. He's in us to fulfill his plan through us in those days that are ahead. I'm telling you right now, 2024 for us is going to be such a wonderful year, but I want your conscience and your awareness to be so enlightened with this truth that not only did Jesus come for God to enable a relationship with you, for God to be in you, but he's already there. And, and, and you knowing that and you releasing your faith in that will cause the expressions of God's best to flow in you and through you. The best is yet to come for you. The best is ahead for you, church. And it's because God's in you. God was with Joseph and he prospered. God's with you and you'll prosper. Anytime God's with somebody and they, they're moving in faith and trusting and following God and flowing with God, it, great things happen. The impossible is never uh, something that you look at and think, Wow, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? You look at situations like that and you realize this is nothing for God. This is nothing for my father. And by saying that, you realize not only is he my father, not only is he in heaven, but he's in me. And the greatest gift that you could recognize that you have right now this Christmas season is Jesus. Because you have Jesus, you are connected to the Father. Your connection to the Father means great success. Your connection to the Father means freedom from darkness, translated out of the power of darkness into the kingdom of light. Your connection to the Father means a connection to love. Your connection to the Father means holiness. It means, it means God couldn't live in me unless Jesus cleaned me up, and made me righteous. Glory to God. I want you to remember this, this season, that one of the greatest gifts you can recognize that you have right now is righteousness. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. If you weren't righteous, God couldn't live in you. But right now, thank God that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Why are you righteous? It's not because of your performance. It's not because of anything you did. You couldn't do anything that could attain righteousness. Even at your best, you still wouldn't attain righteousness. But Jesus came. Here we are again. This is why Jesus came, to connect you to the Father, to enable a relationship with the Father. This is why he came. And so 
for that relationship to be successful, he would have had to eradicate the sin problem and make you righteous. He made you righteous. He who knew no sin was made the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And guess what? We did no sin, but yet he made us righteous. Glory to God. Jesus, hallelujah, lived a perfect life. We couldn't do that. But Jesus did that on our behalf. Why did he do that? So that God could have fellowship with us in a perfectly clean vessel. Amen. Do you know God's not going to be unequally yoked in any way? He has to be equally yoked to live in you. And so Jesus made us righteous to enable God to move in and take residence inside of us. Hallelujah. This should embolden you to pray and talk to God and have fellowship with God. Hallelujah. And, and, and build a relationship with the Father. He's in you and he loves you. Glory to God. Did you get anything out of that this morning? I'm going to conclude with this thought. This holiday season, let these truths resonate in your heart. Let these truths, uh, just, just kind of an awareness of these truths resonate in your spirit. Have, have a great understanding and knowing that Jesus came for you. Jesus came so that you could have the Father uh, living in you and have a relationship with God the Father. Amen. And so that God the Father could live big in you. He is the express will and the express image of the Father. Hey, let me tell you one thing it takes. It takes humility to say this. And you may be, uh, you may be watching today and you've never heard something like this or you've never received Jesus, but it takes humility to say, I've tried. I've tried to live my best. I've tried to do my best. I've tried to be religious and uh, get close to God, yet to no avail. I haven't succeeded and I'd like to receive Jesus. I'm done trying to be my own savior. I'm done trying to save myself. I want to receive Jesus into my heart. What an opportunity, what a perfect time to do it on this Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve by just calling on the name of Jesus, asking Him to come into your heart. You can't save yourself. The, the work of salvation has been completed for you. All it is is you humbling yourself saying, I can't do it. I can't succeed at doing it. I can't become righteous on my own. I can't save myself. I've been trying. I surrender. Jesus. I receive your salvation. I believe you died for me. I believe you took my place. I believe you took my sins. Come into my heart now. I receive you by faith. And I believe you rose from the dead and you did it for me because you love me. Come into my heart. Make me a brand new person. And as you pray that prayer, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. You get born again. You get put in Christ and you become brand new. A new creature that never existed before. New in Christ, connected to the Father, connected to His love, and forgiven from your past. Amen. Pray this prayer with me if you'd like to receive Jesus. Father, I believe that you sent Jesus from heaven to earth just for me. I believe, Father, that you are a God of love and that you love me so much that you sent Jesus to die for me to take my sins. You demonstrated that love by sending Jesus in my place to that cross to take my penalty. I believe he did that to save me. I call on you now, Jesus. Come into my heart. Wash me white as snow. Make me righteous with forgiveness of all my sins by way of your blood that was shed on that cross. I receive that now. I believe that you rose from the dead to give me a brand new life. I receive that now in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to reach out to us. We want to reach out to you. We want to pray more with you. We want to be a blessing to you. Right now, you are saved. You are a brand new person 
in Christ Jesus. God bless you, church. We love you. And I want you to have the greatest Christmas that you've ever had in your life. 2023 is going to be the greatest Christmas you've ever had. Enjoy it with your family. Enjoy it with your friends. Enjoy it with loved ones all around you. And be a blessing because God's living big on the 